Good morning everyone, and today we're going to talk about Philippines Accenture Hands. But first, what is Philippines Accenture Hands? Let's have a brief background. The Philippines Accenture Hands, or originally known as Filipinas Dentro de Cien Años, is an essay written by our famous national hero, Jose Rizal, to forecast the future of the country within a hundred of years. This essay supplements Rizal's two great novels, Noli Me Tangere and El Filibusterismo. This was originally published in La Solidaridad of Madrid and supposed to be an initial issues in the Rizal planned series of 10 to correct the misunderstanding of his previous writings. The essay itself is divided into four parts with each part tackling different subjects and issues. So let's jump on to the first one. Part 1 starts the analysis of the past and is best described by the quote, In order to read the destiny of a people, it is necessary to open the book of its past. This explains that Rizal didn't really predict what would really happen in hundreds of years, but instead a thorough analysis of the past as well as the present and from this conclude what would happen in the future. This part also tackles the effects of Spanish colonization, which could be summarized into three. First one. Due to Spain's implementation of military policies, poverty became rampant. Population decreased and impedes the aspect of life of the Filipino. And second one, as population decreases, disappearance of indigenous Filipino traditions and cultures would be the obvious result. Moreover, Catholicism and traditions introduced by Spaniards slowly replace our known culture. And lastly, with this, our very own Filipino spirit was broken. And in fear of religion with this obedience leading them going to hell, Filipinos became indolent and submissive. But Rizal said eventually the Filipinos would start to realize the oppression of the colonizers. In this part, Rizal present a few questions on what will the future hold. First one, will the Philippines continue to be a Spanish colony? And if so, what kind of colony? Will they become a province of Spain with or without autonomy? To reach this stage, what kind of sacrifices will have to be made? And lastly, will they be separated from the mother country to live independently, to fall into the hands of other nations, or to ally themselves with neighboring powers? Now, moving on to the second part of the essay. This part answers the previous raised question what will become of the Philippines within a century? Will they continue to be a Spanish colony? and gives the answers for those who have strong spirit over the liberty of the country, independence was assured, but for those who are discouraged and delusioned by sad experience shall be prison of the colony forever. This part also compares of the past and the present condition of the Philippines in terms of roles three centuries ago. Rizal says that the liberal Spaniards, ethical conditions of the people remains the same, while for the friars and followers, they have progressed, and for the Filipino ethics, they have retrograded. Rizal also mentions the emergence of an enlightened class, or those who first saw the Spanish as protectors but soon realize it that they are exploiters and executioners, which in cause quickens and spreads enlightenment. So if people starts to awaken, and if the government doesn't act, the revolution would occur. In order to maintain Spanish authority, Rizal presented a few options and possible outcomes. The options are 1. Filipino representative in the Spanish Cortes and 2. To practice their human rights. And the possible outcomes are Philippines remain under Spanish dominations but with more law and greater liberty or they will declare themselves independent. But in prevention of progress of the Philippines is really what Spanish government wants Rizal being generous also presented a few outcomes in which if it occurs. Brutalization of the masses through a caste addicted to the government, impoverishment of the country, gradual extermination of the inhabitants. Next is part 3. In this part, if the Philippines remain under the control of Spain, transformation in a political sense would eventually happen which in return affects the people. In this case, some governors have been trying to introduce needed reforms. Such reforms are importance of freedom of press in order to voice out their complaints and suggestions towards the reformation of the country. This would also serve as a way to keep in touch with the public opinion. However, 
and justice reasons of the Spanish government on why they wouldn't risk putting a Filipino representative in the Spanish Cortes were also tackled. These were because they believe Filipinos prove to be unruly, become political trimmers, or they can't act properly. Results would later on the essay criticize different aspects of Spanish leadership. Lastly, would be part 4. In this part, Rizal also explains the Spanish colonization scientifically, stating the existence of a foreign body would later result to either assimilation, extermination, or encisment. He would also uh, state that eventually, accumulation of acts of injustice would improve and strengthen the ethical nature for keeping the people ignorant, impoverished, and continued extermination had failed. It proves that it is impossible to exterminate Filipino people. Rizal also emphasized on Philippines being colonized by other foreign countries, such as England, Germany, France, Holland, Japan, and United States. To end the essay, Rizal presented a message to Spain. Spain, must we someday tell Filipinos that Do has no ear for her woes and that if she wishes to be saved, must redeem herself. And that is it for the essay. The Philippines a century hence.